Hello, welcome back. It's been a little bit of a slow week, but I got some stuff to share. I had a great visit this week from a fan. His name is Yaakov. He came all the way from Israel. I wasn't in the shop. I got a call from Brett. You got to get back here right away. There's somebody here that needs to meet you. It's my Israeli grandfather. Yeah, that's just, we just got reunited. Who's on the phone? My, my son. Be Hello? My oh, we lost him? No, I finished. You don't connection. You don't have connection. How long have you been creating with your hands? Ah, all the time, all the time. Before I make uh, clothes. You make clothes? clothes? Yeah. Yes, clothes. Oh. Le uh, in leather. Oh, nice. Yes, before. Right on. And who's your favorite YouTuber? My favorite YouTuber? <laughs> Jimmy DiResta. <laughs> Who else do you watch on YouTube? I watch, uh, okay, Jimmy DiResta. I know him. I, wa I work only uh, wood, wood uh, fashion. What Guys the people with, uh, with the wood. Yes. Yeah. Leather craft. Oh, the other craft, right? Yeah, the other craft. Did I, you see my toolbox? Ah? Huh? Did you see my toolbox over there? Yeah. What is the toolbox? Come look. Uh, you push that. Definitely tremendous place. Yeah. Everything you have, every, the best, your best tools? Or well, the ones I use the most. Do you love? The ones I am New comfortable York using. Thing. Yeah. I never understand where you make for cut the wood, the big, uh, the big wood. Yeah. It comes through the door there, down the hallway. Is it yes, anything? but uh, I don't understand because. It's not easy. I, I, I work wood, yeah. but I have place. You got room. Y yes, I have place. I, I have, have exactly the right amount of room, but not anymore. Now I'm going to get bigger. Shmiyako Benchlush. And where are you from? I'm from uh, Israel. And you came on in Israel. And you came here just to meet me? Yes, yes. I come. No, not very, very. <laughs> I'm kidding. I come I'm in kidding. For, for, for make something. But uh, I said all the time I come in, I don't see Jimmy DiResta. <laughs> It's the last time. I, now I have to see him. <laughs> My son is telling me, if you don't see, you give me a picture of Jimmy DeResta, <laughs> do, don't come back. <laughs> well, we met. You made my acquaintance. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Your enthusiasm is infectious. So Yaakov and I hung out most of the day. He hung out, we, we just shared stories about making things and it was a real wonderful visit. I made another friend for life. So Yaakov, thank you very much. I know your son watches and your son made you watch. So maybe your son is going to be excited to watch this. Coincidentally, I was making nameplates for my buddy and Yaakov speaks Hebrew and reads Hebrew. So he was able to proofread my buddy's art labels that we were making on the CNC machine. And so it was good timing. I got the Karma Grip this week, which is something I was playing with all week. You'll notice it in the rest of the video. It's a really cool tool. If you haven't got one yet, if you want a steady cam, it works much easier than the Osmo. I have both of them. And the Karma Grip, if you have the GoPro 5, works a thousand times better than the Osmo. And there's no sound problems. The thing is dead silent. Karma Grip. And this isn't a paid advertisement. It's just a cool tool. And considering what things cost in the 90s and the 80s, as far as film production, these things are virtually free. They're just amazing and make your life so much easier. So I got a surprise call this week from Ben Ueda. Him and his friend flew into my neighborhood to come and hang out. And this is us hanging out. What's up, brother? Good to see you. How are you, man? Hang in there. Nice to see you. I'm glad we got you like opening the door. You know Taylor? You never met Taylor, have you? Ah, hey, nice Taylor, to meet you. Ben interviewed me for his podcast, which is going to be, uh, I'm not sure when it's going to air, but check out Ben's podcast. I'll put the link below. And he did a one on one interview with me in my new shop, the very first interview ever in my new workspace. Make uh, sort of modern furniture and designs, and I just came back from New York for getting my new. Between these different lines, I can do sort of every inch long increment by sort of adjusting it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just gonna be like one and five eighths inch screws or like one and a quarter or one and a half. So I can just hold it up to like the other side. <laughs> oh damn. And really quickly sort of. Uh, that is commitment see the to your craft. For sure. It was fun seeing Ben, surprise visit. And I might take a flight with Nick. We are in Freehold, New York, and we flew in from where? From Farmingdale, New York. We just came out of Manhattan this morning. So we stopped by to see Jimmy, had lunch at a, the yellow 
Yellow Deli. Yellow Deli. Got Oak to Hill. see the farmhouse. Got to get attacked by the killer chickens. And yeah. <laughs> uh, now we're going to head up to Boston. We're going to see one of my first architecture projects. Do a little flyby. I'm Nick Tarasio. I run a private jet company in a flight school out of New York. And uh, we're in the process of launching a YouTube channel that's all about taking influencers and thought leaders on airplane rides. Some aviation intel, like how to become a pilot, like all the weird myths and demystifying what goes on in this world. First time I flew, I was two years old. My dad strapped me to his lap and he said I dove the plane. So I've been flying since I was a little kid. Slight right improvement then. since then. Yeah. And when you, speaking of diving, are you encouraged to dive just so you know what to expect? Can you go, do you go into I'm a stunt spin? pilot. Get at it, for real? Yeah, I was doing stunt piloting for a long time. No kidding. Yeah, I love that, because it's like, I love to know the boundary. Right. Right? And then you feel like, you can flip this thing over, it's going to be fine. It's not made to do it, but if I ever got rolled, right. it's not a big deal. Wow. Do you it land be it a big deal down, for like me. in a Denzel Washington movie? No. We're not going to do that. <laughs> We're not right? going to do the flight Good. landing. <laughs> I was flying Learjets professionally for 15 years. Oh, wow. And we did a lot of organ transplant. We were flying in the middle of the night, flying doctors around to organ harvest organs. Wow, really? that's amazing. Yeah, a lot of that stuff. I once got cleared for takeoff on a runway that had a crossing runway where they had cleared the other plane to take off at the same time. Oh my God. And uh, when we took off, we crossed like, the other plane didn't even see me because he was on top of me by five feet, just right across me. Oh my God. And I was like, oh man, that was close. I was wow. pretty pissed off. I think that controller got fired. Wow, that's crazy. So what that is was, he doing now? I have no idea. He's starting his own YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, he's probably doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck and I wish you guys the best hey man, going back so much out. for opening your place out. Uh, sure, man. It was fun having you guys. Thank you very much. What is the name of your channel? It's called Take Off with Nick. This is Nick's production company. What's up? What's your name and what's your channel? I'm uh, James Fisher. Uh, channel's Take Off with Nick. I'm, I'm shooting with him. I also have another one, Fisheye Traveler. Fisheye Traveler. All right. Well, take a, take a look at these guys and tell them you found them through here. Buddy, Thank always you. good to see you, man. Good to see you. Check out Nick's channel, Take Off With Nick. It's a new channel, he's just starting. And if you have any ideas for him, leave him some comments on his channel. So this week, Ken, who's my landlord, showed me around the rest of the complex. I rent one little piece of this much bigger complex. Kind of had this little fantasy conversation about renting it out to other makers, other YouTubers. This is a pretty amazing space sitting and waiting for more people like me to come and take advantage of this space. It sat empty for many, many years and my landlord is on the board of directors for the town and they purchased it to try and beautify the neighborhood. And now only are they really starting to do that. So with my help, maybe I can bring some makers and shakers to the neighborhood. Makers and shakers, that sounds familiar. Dave Picciuto. So this week I spent a few days in the shop just organizing and trying to develop a feng shui about how and where I want my machines. These two heavy machines were on my trailer. I was able to get my trailer stuck out of the mud from a few weeks ago, got it over to the space, backed it in without hitting anything, and I was able to remove these two big heavy pieces of equipment. This old radial arm saw from about the 40s, and then my, my joiner, my 1911 crescent joiner. This is an 18-inch wide joiner. And this uh, joiner probably weighs at least a thousand pounds. I don't know, this uh, engine hoist was, was more than adequate for me to drag it around. So if you need a reminder about how dangerous moving heavy pieces of equipment can be, take a look at my buddy's channel, Brian Block. I'll put a link below. This week he was moving a piece of equipment that weighed over 30,000 pounds and the cable broke. Thankfully, nobody got hurt. He broke the machine a little bit and his concrete floor, but he did not get hurt, thankfully. But it just goes to show you, when you're moving heavy equipment, don't rely on the stuff that's supposedly rated. You know, you got to double and triple check and maybe add an extra cable or two. I don't know what he could have done to prevent this because everything was apparently rated for the weight he was doing. It's just equipment failure. So if you're moving heavy things, don't get underneath them. That's the reason why he's not hurt because he wasn't underneath it when it fell. But check out Brian's channel. Thank you to my buddy in Chicago, Master of None, for sending me this package. 
Links below, go follow him, check him out. This week's riff is from Natalie Murphy. Natalie, thank you very much, as always. This week I'll be at the Filson store. I'm gonna be doing a live lathe demonstration, making a mallet on a small lathe in the store. Come, there'll be whiskey and fun people to hang out with and get to meet. So check me out this Thursday, the 18th of May, at the Filson shop in New York City. I'm proud to announce that we rescued a dog this week. Willie picked this dog up from the pound in upper New York, up near Harlem. And she was, we just happened to see her on the internet and she was available. We picked her up and we don't have a name for her yet. She's still getting acclimated. She's really shy and she's really cute. And so she's another member of the family. So we don't know the name yet. Maybe next week we'll have a name. I think she's a black Yorkie or maybe a, a Scotty and a Yorkie mix. We don't know, but she's about six pounds. I'm sorry I'm out of focus. And I also know I need to trim my nose hairs. I'll do that before next week, I promise. Thanks for watching, see you next week.